Welcome to this overview of PXF Distort. So here I have a shot of a beautiful swan on a lake or a pond and I want to add a, an extra swan here. So I have prepared a swan with an alpha channel and I can put it on top of my image here but this doesn't look very realistic. We're missing the reflection of the swan on the water. So I've also prepared an upside down, down swan that's meant to do the reflection. So if I add the reflection and then the swan, this is what I get. So this is slightly better. I have kind of sort of reflection, but I want to have the ripples from the water on my reflection. So to do that, we're going to use a PXF distort. So let's bring one in, PXF menu, PXF distort, and I'm going to connect my image input to the image I want to distort and the lens input to my uh, distortion image. So in this case, I've prepared a, a bit of animated noise to distort my reflection with. So this is the distortion image that goes in the lens input. And we can adjust the amount. So by default, this is very subtle. So we can crank up the amount if we need a lot more we can uncheck fine and now our effect is very uh, obvious. So now I have a pretty distorted image. I want to distort the alpha channel as well as the RGB. By default, I'm only distorting RGB. So alpha is not affected. I need to distort the alpha in this case. So I'm going to switch to RGBA. And now I can see that my alpha is distorted. Uh, I can of, of course adjust the amount of distortion that I want. If I want less detail in the distortion, I can increase the blur lens and now my distortion becomes more ropey. I like the default of one for this shot. You can choose which filter you want to do. So this will uh, affect whether the edges are sharp or soft. This is the internal ST maps uh, filter. I can choose which filter I want to use. So for example, if I want to use a notch filter, it's going to look a bit smoother or a cubic if I want it to be a bit sharper. So I'm going to choose notch for this. I think it looks better and let's see how it looks in context. So now I've got my reflection and on top I've got my swan. Now I can see my reflection is going too far back here. I need to uh, cut my reflection with a mask so there's no reflection on the top part here. So I've prepared a roto here with a gradient and uh, there's a new feature in this version of PXF Distort. Now we can use the mask to drive the amount of distortion as opposed to the opacity of distortion. So previously mask behaved like the any mask in Nuke. So it was driving the transparency and you had a mix between your sharp image and your distorted image, which is probably not what we're after here. The new feature here is called distort amount. And now instead of driving the opacity with our mask, we're driving the amount of distortion. So we're driving the amount of distortion with our control mask here. So this is a new feature in PXF Distort for this version. So this is without the mask and this is with the mask. So you can see the distortion becoming smaller as the value in the alpha decreases. And of course you can mix to mix between your original frame and the distortion as usual with most mix knobs. So let's see how it looks. So I've got this and on top of it, I've got my swan and let's see how it looks in motion. This is starting to get there, but unfortunately, uh, we're missing a big thing here. This is sharp all the way through and there's a bit of defocus going on here. So the stuff near camera needs to be out of focus. So this is outside the scope of PXF distort, but we have another PXF node that can help us. It's PXF I defocus. Let's go back to the PXF menu, PXF defocus and PXF I defocus. Let's bring that in here. Image is the image I want to defocus and map is the amount of defocus. So let's copy our ramp here. So we don't want a Gaussian blur. We want a full on defocus and this is too much. Let's bring down the amount with max size and try to match the real defocus on the real swan next to it. 
I'm pretty happy with this. Maybe I just need to change the fall off here so it's a bit sharper near the swan. I'm pretty happy with this. All right, let's look at this. So let's have a peek in motion. All right, so this is working pretty well. I'm very happy with this. So this is the main use of PXF Distort, basically creating reflection and refraction type of uh, distortions using some control image. So that's the main usage, but there is an alternate usage that's very interesting also, and it is to help with roto and keying. So let's have a look at a completely different example. Here I've prepared a roto of somebody playing basketball, and I'm uh, copying the roto with the RGB, pre-molting my image, and then copying the bounding box to be a bit faster and I'm com comping it on top of some background. And you can see here that my roto is sometimes just a couple pixels bigger than the edge of the actual uh, person. And because the background's pretty bright, then you can see as soon as my roto is outside, I, I, get, I get a bright edge here on the leg and everywhere else. So one way to do this would be to shrink the alpha but alternately we could try to inflate the rgb basically grow the rgb to fill the alpha channel so one way to do this would be to use pxf distort so let's try that we want to distort our image our rgb and use the alpha as the distortion image the distortion driver And right away, we can see that it's promising. Even with default settings, we're growing the edge of our character here, our, uh, our basketball player. So we can try to make it a bit more, but you won't be able to get much more than a few pixels here. But this is about as much as I'm comfortable going. You can see there's some edges that are doubled up here. So to try to mitigate that, you can increase blur lens by one going to blur lens 2 and that's pretty good so you can see most of my edges are growing cleanly now and we're basically inflating the rgb to try to fill our alpha our roto that's a little bit too big in some spaces so you got to be careful not to overdo it if you go too far you will end up warping the shoes and the head and the fingers and so on so you got to keep it reasonable but this these are reasonable values here so now if we inject our roto after the distort we're only distorting the rgb not the roto not the alpha so now we if we look at our pre-malt this is without and this is with so you can see that our edges are nicer even though our alpha didn't change we're just inflating our rgb to fill the edge here and then we're copying the bounding box to be a bit faster and we can also apply motion blur with vector edge blur there's a separate video about vector edge blur so now we can add motion blur on top here so we have the motion blur on our basketball and this is with all the magic applied the motion blur and the distort so if we turn both off this is before and this is after so you can see that our edges look much nicer and this will work for roto but this can work also for a green screen or blue screen keying if you have just a tiny edge of a couple pixels you can use pxf distort to inflate your rgb to try to grow the rgb instead of shrinking the alpha essentially so there you go that was my introduction to pxf distort i hope you've enjoyed it and i'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.